Hi friends, in this short presentation, we will discuss how to approach a patient with chest pain. So this presentation is meant for just a quick review. For in-depth understanding, please check out the detailed lecture on chest pain available on this channel. Starting with a case presentation. So a 52 year old man presents to emergency room with central chest discomfort for 30 minutes described as pressure radiating to left arm associated with mild sweating. There is no prior similar episode history. History of hypertension and smoking is present and vitals are heart rate 88, BP 138 by 84, SPO 2 98 and ECG is pending. So let's use this real world case to guide our discussion on how to approach chest pain, a very common but potentially dangerous situation. We are discussing this topic because chest pain is a common ER as well as OPT complaint and it can range from benign to life threatening causes. Therefore, early differentiation is critical because missed acute coronary syndrome or aortic dissection can be fatal. It is important to note that only 15 to 20 percent of patients who present with chest pain actually have a acute coronary syndrome and the most common cause of chest pain is gastrointestinal causes. So these causes are responsible for more than 40 percent of the cases of chest pain. When we simply divide the causes of chest pain, it can be due to trauma or there can be non-traumatic causes which include cardiopulmonary causes and non-cardiopulmonary causes. Cardiopulmonary include cardiac cause, vascular cause, pulmonary causes. Non-cardiopulmonary include gastrointestinal, neuromuscular and some other causes. So as we have discussed, the most common cause of non-traumatic chest pain is gastrointestinal causes followed by cardiac causes. So cardiac are second most common. Now among cardiac, the chest pain can be due to ischemia or infarction or it can also be due to pericarditis that is inflammation of pericardium. Now ischemic chest pain is further divided into stable angina, unstable angina and MI. Now this MI can be non-ST elevation or ST elevation MI. So stable angina typically is 2 to 10 minutes duration and is relieved by rest and nitrates. On the other hand, MI is of duration more than 30 minutes and unstable angina is around 10 to 30 minutes. This MI pain is usually not respondent to rest or nitrate therapy. So we have made detailed lectures on all of these including stable angina, unstable angina and MI which you can check out. So while considering the differentials, always keep in mind the life threatening causes which must be ruled out first. So these include ACS, aortic dissection, pulmonary embolism, tension pneumothorax, pericardial tamponade and esophageal rupture. Other common causes which are less serious include GRD, costochondritis, musculoskeletal strain, pneumonia pleuritis or chest pain due to panic attack. Our first job is to rule out what can kill the patient. Then we can think about less urgent possibilities like these. Approaching the patient in ER or OPD, we have to ask some key history questions regarding the quality of pain, onset of pain, what is the duration, location and radiation, associated symptoms, what are the aggravating factors and associated risk factors. Like for example, pressure sensation is associated with pain of myocardial infarction, sharp pain can be present with aortic dissection, burning sensation can be there with GRD, pleuritic pain can be due to pleural effusion and likewise. So you all must be knowing all these features and associated conditions we are not going into detail although we will discuss the salient features of underlying causes in coming slides. So a detailed history is the best tool it often gives more clues than labs or scans. After asking the right questions to the patient a focused examination will help narrow down the field even more. So we have to look for the vitals of the patient, look for hypotension, 
tachycardia or fever if present then we have certain physical findings which we will try to correlate with the underlying condition so raised jvp with muffled heart sounds can be seen with cardiac tamponade then if the pulses are unequal or the bp is unequal in both the arms it is suggestive of aortic dissection as the cause of acute chest pain chest wall tenderness is present in musculoskeletal causes like costochondritis wheezes or crackles can be heard in pneumonia or pulmonary embolism and finally pericardial rub can be heard in pericarditis now let's see what are some initial investigations to order so definitely we will order an ecg first to look for cardiac causes like stemi and stemi pericarditis then we can order cardiac enzymes if ecg is supportive of ischemia to detect myocardial injury chest x ray to rule out pneumothorax pneumonia widened mediastinum if the clinical picture is suggestive d dimer if pulmonary embolism is suspected and to calculate wells score then abg in suspected pulmonary embolism or hypoxia eco and ct chest for aortic dissection and embolism now there are some rapid risk stratification scores like temi score for ischemia well score for pulmonary embolism and aortic dissection detection risk score so these clinical predictor scores can help you quantify the risk they do not replace your clinical judgment but support it now let's try to answer some of the clinical presentation based on the given pattern so if the patient is having pressure like pain associated with exertion and is radiating to left arm or jaw it is likely suggestive of acute coronary syndrome if there is sudden tearing pain radiating to back it is suggestive of aortic dissection patient with sharp pleuritic pain with hemoptysis underlying condition can be pulmonary embolism pain worse on lying flat better sitting up then chest pain can be due to pericarditis and this pain can also radiate towards the back burning epigastric pain associated with meals suggestive of gastric cause grd pleuritic sharp chest pain which is unilateral associated with fever cough can be due to pleural effusion then sudden onset unilateral chest pain with decreased breath sound can be associated with pneumothorax localized tender area can be suggestive of musculoskeletal pain costochondritis then sharp burning pain which has a dermatomal distribution associated with vesicular rash is seen with herpes zoster herpes zoster infection so we have summarized the major causes of chest pain and their typical pattern and features now all of which we have discussed till now let's summarize it into a simple algorithm which we can use in opt as well as in emergency so firstly we have to see the airway breathing circulation and vitals of the patient to rule out if the patient in, is unstable like patient with shock severe tachycardia if the patient is stable we'll take history and physical examination to rule out red flags which we have already discussed ecg and trop chest x ray has to be done as a initial triage risk score will guide further workup like ct autogram d dimer if the patient is stable and is low risk we consider gi causes musculoskeletal or psychiatric causes of chest pain so with this we have completed our discussion on approach to chest pain and finally there is mcq for all of you you can answer in the comment section thank you so much